Knox Presbyterian Church, Rev. Mavis Curry, Director of Music, Martin Anderla, Sunday, January 31, 2021, Sermon Title, Stuck in My Craw. I'd like to welcome you to Knox Presbyterian Church in St. Thomas's online worship service. And once again, here to my home on this Sunday in January. We look forward to the day when we can be together again safely in our church building. Wherever you are, I hope uh, that you feel God's spirit with you and you know you are part of a wider community of faith as we worship together. Few announcements before we begin. Firstly, the thanks of our congregation goes to Kirk DeGood and Sharon Weems. They have made a donation sponsoring our online service today. Sharon lives in London and her cousin Kirk lives several hours away, but during these online services, they've been able to worship together. And so we thank them for that donation in memory of their families, uh, celebrating the gift of family as we worship together today. The sympathy of our congregation is extended to the families of two members of our church who passed away in the last week. Ron Manchin and Bob Reed both passed away and we think of their families and their loved ones uh, as they grieve during this difficult, difficult time. Early in the week, you should be receiving a newsletter and a devotional for the month of February via email, and it will also be posted on our website. If for some reason you don't receive that, if you're not on our email list, please drop me a line or give the church a call. Uh, it, sometimes contact names get lost and uh, we want to make sure that everyone connected with our church receives that information. We also wanted to let you know that if you're listening in on the phone today, uh, we will be mailing those newsletters and devotionals out and you should receive it in about a week's time. February is traditionally pay it forward month at Knox. Usually we host, our young people host a soup luncheon for our entire congregation and all the proceeds that uh, we gather from that luncheon go to the Rodney Outreach Fund. Rodney Outreach is a fund that was established many years ago at Knox and that fund is used to encourage our young people with post-secondary scholarships it's provided seed money for all kinds of interesting projects at Knox, including our community breakfast and our Santa Claus parade, among other things. Rodney Outreach has also sent children to Camp Kintel every summer, except for last summer when no one was allowed to go to camp. 
And so in the month of February, we'll be thinking about paying it forward a little bit. We've got a project going on at the church during February, and a, a number of you have signed up. If you'd like to sign up for the Pay It Forward project, uh, drop me a line. Uh, we're going to be, you'll be invited to make a pie or a batch of cookies or uh, sew something small, uh, something handmade, not a big item, or maybe even something simple like purchasing a, a Timmy's gift card. And then uh, I'll be making sure that people receive those some secret pay it forward things happen during the month of February. So if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, please contact me. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to Martin. Christ welcomes us to this day, to this time that is set apart for prayer and for reflection and for worship. Christ welcomes us to this day and to this moment and invites us to meet him here. As we worship together today, may the deep 
peace of Christ settle within each one of us. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, it has been so long since we've been able to worship together in our sanctuary. We miss singing hymns. We miss looking one another in the eye over a hot cup of coffee. We miss praying together. We miss being together. And so, O oh God, we know we need your presence today. We hold one another up to you in prayer and ask that you might surround us with your comfort and with your strength. Lord God, bless us today and help us to give to you all of those things that might prevent us from worshiping you. For we pray in the great name of Jesus, the one who taught us when we pray together, to also say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Seek Ye First. This past week is, has been the week for Christian unity, an ecumenical celebration, an invitation for us to recognize our brothers and sisters in Christ from different denominations. And so as we sing this familiar hymn, we'll see images of churches uh, from different denominations uh, across our country. Let's sing together. Seek ye first. Well, as I mentioned earlier, usually around this time of year, we're celebrating our Pay It Forward luncheon. Our children are leading us in worship and serving hot soup in Rodney Hall. This year, that won't be happening. One of the reasons why our young people lead that service is to remind us of the importance of all of the different ministries that reach out to children and youth. And one ministry that the children of Knox have particularly benefited from is the ministry of Camp Kintail. Camp Kintail is the Synod of Southwestern Ontario's residential camp on the shore of Lake Huron. It's just about 40 minutes north of Godrich and our children and youth as well as our adults have benefited from Camp Kintail's beautiful, beautiful setting and their powerful ministry. Well, this past summer has, was a most unusual summer for Camp Kintail. There were no children swimming in the waters. They had a minimal staff maintaining their site, looking toward brighter days. And you can imagine for a residential camp, what kind of financial impact COVID-19 had for them. 
today on this Sunday when we think about warmer days, mm -hmm. when we hope and pray for the end of COVID-19, we think about Camp Kintail. And so for our children's time today, we're going to listen to some Camp Kintel music and see some familiar Knox faces and how they have enjoyed Camp Kintail in years past. See if you can name all of the people who are featured uh, during this short collage of photos. Following uh, that song and those pictures, we'll be hearing just a few words from the director of Camp Kintail, Reverend Teresa McDonald Lee. She's extending a word of thanks. It was recorded earlier this month for all of the churches that have continued to support Camp Kintail in prayer and financially and uh, in all of their various projects during COVID-19. So let's listen and watch for some familiar faces as we remember Camp Kintail. Happy New Year's friends. I know I was really glad to turn the calendar to 2021 last week. But before we get too far into this new year, I wanted to take a moment to thank the entire Camp Kintel community for your love and support during this last year. A big thank you to everyone who came out to the weekends away or to retreats. Camp Kintel is at its best when it is full of people and laughter and your presence here was truly life-giving. Thank you to everyone who came to a Sunday night dinner, to our friends near and far and to our neighbors. We love to feed people and we can't wait to have you back again soon. Thank you to everyone who connected with Camp Kintel on social media. It was wonderful to see Kintel energy out into the world. Thank you to everyone who sent encouraging notes and cards. We cherished all of them in the office. And a big thank you to everyone who made a donation in this past year. Each donation was a gift, from the boxes that you sent from our wish list that the staff opened up to your online donations and to the checks that came in the mail. We ended 2020 in the black, which seemed impossible last March. We are so grateful for your dedication, for your generosity and your commitment to this ministry. And I have to admit, I cried more than a few times opening up your envelopes and emails. Thank you. I know many people are beginning to wonder what the next summer is going to look like. Right now, we are waiting for the guidelines from the Ontario Camps Association before we announce any plans for this coming summer. The guidelines have been prepared by summer camp and healthcare professionals. Right now, they're being reviewed by a team at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, and from there, they'll go to the Chief Medical Officer of the Province of Ontario. When these guidelines are complete, the guidelines and our experiences from welcoming families last summer will help us to create safe and fun summer experiences for everyone. 
We anticipate we will have more information in about a month and we will let you know as soon as possible. This season is called Epiphany in the Church, the time when we recognize that Jesus has come into the world to be the light of the world. As the days lengthen and the light returns, let us hold on to the hope that is ours. May these days bring grace enough, love enough, and hope enough for us to see the light in the world, in Jesus, in our neighbors, and in ourselves. Can't wait to see you all soon. Well, again, our thanks is extended to Teresa McDonald Lee and her, her husband, Jonathan, and to all of the staff at Camp Kintail for their creativity during COVID-19. And we continue to remember them in prayer. Our first scripture lesson today comes to us from the wisdom literature of the Old Testament from the book of Proverbs. And our reader this morning is Ed Ellis. This morning I'm reading from the New International Translation of the Bible on the moral benefits of wisdom found in Proverbs 2 verses 1 through 11. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands for you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Well, thank you, Ed, for reading our first lesson today. Now let's continue to worship as we listen to Laura Bolt on the flute. This is a piece that was recorded just at the end of 2020. Laura came to our sanctuary uh, with her flute in hand and together with Martin, they recorded this piece for today's worship service.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father and for the sake of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as most of you know, I grew up in the country in a family that was used to using expressions that were common when you live in a rural community. Maybe some of these expressions are familiar to you too. I recall my dad sitting down at the dinner table complaining about a, a new young man working at the feed mill where he was employed. He said, ah, oh, he was wet behind his ears. So young is what that expression means, wet behind his ears. I grew up in a family that used expressions like, ah, oh, they're thick as thieves. Maybe you've heard that expression as well. They're best friends, they're never apart, thick as thieves. I vividly remember my mom using the term stuck in my craw. She'd say it just stuck in my craw if a, uh, an acquaintance um, did something that really bothered her. Or maybe it was some of us kids at home. We did things that stuck in her craw. She just couldn't let them go. They kept bothering her almost like a stone in our shoe. Well, I need to tell you that uh, this morning I had a different passage prepared that I thought I would be speaking on. But we had Bible study on Wednesday of this past week. And we studied a parable that stuck in my craw. It's not a common parable of Jesus. We only find it, in fact, in Luke's Gospel. And I selected it for our Wednesday morning Bible study because I thought it was a little less familiar than most of Jesus' parables. When I googled it and did some research in my own library, I read that it was often described as one of the most confusing parables of Jesus. And it didn't take me long to see why. Even as our group of 12 people on our Zoom Bible study tried to peel it apart and dissect what Jesus meant, it made us feel uneasy, unsteady. The story stuck in our craw. And so I thought, as I've been reflecting on that passage all week, I thought maybe I would invite you to reflect on it with me. Today's scripture is a reading from the Gospel of Luke, a parable of Jesus, Luke chapter 16. Let's listen together for the word of God. Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that I, when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 450. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. We thank God for this reading from his word. When we studied this Bible story at our Bible study on Wednesday, we wondered aloud what the title of the parable might be. In our Bibles, it was entitled The Parable of the Shrewd Manager. But we decided some other titles might be more appropriate. 
One woman said she thought it should be the parable of the three rascals because the master, the manager, and even the debtors didn't seem like very likable kind of people. I wondered if it should be called the parable I wished Jesus never told. And in the days that followed, I, I wondered why the gospel writer Luke chose to include this confusing parable in his gospel. Why didn't he just leave this confusing tale out? It would be so much simpler for all of us. Because it's true, none of the characters are very appealing in the parable today. I don't particularly like the master, that rich man who commends his manager for being dishonest. I don't really like the manager who's just trying to save his own skin. And the debtors, well, there's an element of dishonesty to them too. As we talked at our Wednesday morning Bible study, we spent a fair bit of time complaining about all three of those characters, complaining about why this story was possibly included in scripture. Well, last night as I drifted off to sleep, this story was still turning over and over in my mind. Where is the good news in the parable of the shrewd manager. I wonder if it might be helpful for us to look a little more closely at where we find this passage in scripture, particularly at the parables that come directly before the parable of the shrewd manager. If you go back just a few verses, you can see that this parable falls after a selection of three different parables about losing things. The first is the parable of the lost sheep. You remember the parable of the lost sheep. It says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Which one of us is like that shepherd? Which one of us would leave 99 good sheep to go after one that was lost? Well, the answer is clear. None of us would. It's just not practical. It doesn't make sense. Then there's the parable of the lost coin. Do you recall how that parable goes? It begins, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. Who among you is like that? Well, none of us, none of us are like that. I mean, if we had 10 silver coins and lost one, certainly we would turn up the couch cushions looking for it, but to tear our house apart and then to hold a big party, inviting all of our friends and family in to celebrate one lost silver coin, not many of us would do that. Following the parable of the lost coin is the parable of the lost son. It's one of the most familiar parables in scripture. That story where the son, youngest son, takes off with his father's money, his inheritance and wastes it, only to crawl back his head between his knees, begging forgiveness. The father holds a huge party for him, celebrating his return. The older brother sits out in the dark, wondering whether he should join in the party. He's frustrated. 
perturbed. It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair. Why would the father hold a party for the lost son? And you and I, we say, well, we wouldn't. We would be more inclined to pat the older son on the back, make the younger son pay. Then we're given the parable of the shrewd manager. I woke up this morning wondering if perhaps all of those parables have been placed together for a reason. All of those parables turn our expectations on their head. They remind us that the God we worship is not like us. The God we worship has a more gracious and expansive and loving spirit than any of us. The God we worship throws a party for one lost sheep or one lost coin. The God we worship wants to celebrate anyone who returns to him. The God we worship can take even our worst traits, like the traits of the shrewd manager, and turn them into something good. Think on that for a moment. The God we worship is different than us. He loves us so much that even when we are at our worst, he wants to welcome us back. The God we worship can take even the traits that we sometimes wish we didn't have, the traits we don't like to admit we have. And if we allow him to, he can change them into something for good. I'm not sure how many of you have heard that old story called the cracked pot, but I thought I might share it with you today. It's an old Chinese proverb or story. It goes like this. An elderly Chinese woman had two large pots, each hung on the ends of a pole which she carried across her neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of the long walks from the stream to the house, the crack pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily with the woman bringing home only one and a half pots of water. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments and the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it could only do half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be bitter failure, it spoke to the woman one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself because this crack in my side. It causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. The old woman smiled. Did you notice that there are flowers on your side of the path, but not on the other pot side? That's because I have always known about your flaw. So I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we walk back, you water them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my table. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be this beauty to grace my house. I'd be the first to say that the shrewd manager makes me uncomfortable. This story makes me squirm. It's filled with imperfect people. And yet the gospel writer Luke chose to include this passage about Jesus. And I'm wondering if there's a message in it for all of us imperfect people. I'm wondering if Christ is nudging us to say today, to telling us that no matter what our imperfection, God loves us anyway. 
inviting us to use what we have for the glory of God challenging us to see one another, not just for our flaws, but through the eyes of the God who longs to hold us close. On this January Sunday, may we reflect on this parable that sticks in my craw, and may we celebrate the God who is greater than any of us. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. And our prayer today includes images from our 52 frame project, places where members of our congregation have seen God. Let's join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are all around us. And we do not understand your amazing grace We do not understand the depth of your forgiveness. We do not understand how you can love us despite our faults and even because of them. But, oh God, we give you thanks today for the stories of scripture that challenge us and push us even years after we have first heard them. Lord God, hear our prayers today. We pray for children who are returning to school this week. We pray for their teachers and their principals. We hold up parents to you in prayer and ask that you might surround them with peace, strength, and comfort. And Lord God, we pray for one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ. For you know the needs in each one of our hearts, and we lift them up to you. We bring this prayer to you in the great name of Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision is the tune is from Ireland originally. And so the images that accompany this hymn are all images from Ireland. Let's sing together. Now let us go in peace and may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Our I Miss Your Face pictures are all from Camp Kintail this Sunday. Images of folk from our own church and uh, from churches across our synod celebrating God's presence on the shores of Lake Huron.
Have a wonderful week, Knox. I miss you all. Savior, cause he's your best friend, but the best thing of all is that he's coming again.